this is a current setup for white black so we've got our 402 craft exemplar to get ahead on the board quickly for fatal pushes as some cheap removal three knight of malice which has a few nice synergies in the deck if you have a white permanent in play it has three power so it can crew heart of kirin great against the blue white control deck since it doesn't get hit by seal away or cast out or teferi's minus then we have four scrap heaps typical synergistic aggressive uh, card in this deck and crew heart of kirin pumps two craft exemplar and uh, has synergy with karn as well then the full four heart full four heart of kirin which is the main kind of threat in this deck at uh, two mana can crew it with multiple three power creatures or with uh, or Planeswalkers like Gideon or Karn. Speaking of Gideon, we have two Gideon of the Trials. It can be used both offensively of, or uh, defensively, and can also help us crew Heart of Kirin. For History of Benalia, just a nice aggressive card, and shines against more controlling decks, like uh, blue White Control, where they can't seal away the tokens. Two Thopter Arrest as kind of additional removal spells that don't cost four mana since we already have quite a few four drops in the deck if you count cast out binding karn and ballista for two so that's why we have the two thopter rest it's of course gonna be a lot worse against control decks than the cast out or excellence binding but better against the aggressive decks only costing three mana and can still exile an artifact as well which is useful against godfather's gift kind of strategies and then one cast out one binding and then three Karns, which are great here, both the minus two ability to make an artifact token if we're gonna go on the beatdown plan, or the plus one and minus one to gain some Karn advantage. And then the full four walking ballista, which also is great here, with the toolcraft exemplar giving us an additional artifact to play on turn two. Goes well on turn four just to mow down some one toughness creatures, and in combination with Karn, when uh, the opponent gives you a ton of lands with the Karn plus one and minus one, or a plus one rather, then you end up with a ton of lands in the late game and you can just play a walking ballista for three or four to uh, burn out the opponent and then our mana base we're missing one concealed courtyard and one isolated chapel so we're just working with three of each right now so that's just a small side note if you're trying to play the optimal deck you probably want four of each but currently we're out of rare wild cards then we have nine plains five swamps and then some value deserts one shafat dunes two if near dead lands and a scavenger grounds as well which can come in handy against uh, torrential gear hulk or scarab god or other graveyard decks and then in the sideboard this is kind of a bit all over the place right now i've got a few tools against various decks uh, still a work in progress so we have a fragmentize to deal with artifacts or enchantments for just one mana three duress against control bloodfast also shines against control decks a spyglass can name the fairy or maybe get to the afterlife invoke the divine additional disenchant that can maybe also take out a torrential girl after sideboard doomfall kind of also good against control as it's both a duress or can maybe get rid of a, a lyra dawnbringer that the blue white player can bring in after sideboard two harvesters an additional artifact synergizes with the deck and shines against the more aggressive decks being able to gain some life Two Selva Wreckage can also be part of a transformational plan where you're more controlling after sideboard. A Lyra Dawnbringer also shines against the more aggressive decks. A Liliana, an additional Planeswalker that's hard to deal with for control decks. And an Eldest Reborn can also catch a Teferi off guard and uh, get some nice value there. So that's what we're gonna play in this next competitive league. So let's jump right into it. All right, this sounds a little awkward since we don't have an artifact to turn on the toolcraft exemplar. But I don't think we can ship a hand that has good mana, a nice balance of removal and threats, and hopefully the artifact will come. Definitely weak to Chain Whirler with the sand, but so be it. Alright, it's a monorad deck. Turn on Soulscar Mage. I did not find the uh, artifact this turn. 
So it is risky to run out the other exemplar here in the face of a chain whirler on three. Uh, it's pretty aggressive to want to fatal push the soul scar mage just to push through one damage. So I think I'll just play the other exemplar, be fine to get destroyed by a chain whirler, and say go. Ooh, blue red wizards. All right, that uh, definitely changes things. So, chain whirler no longer a concern. That's good. Probably gonna fatal push that, even though our exemplars could attack into the eternal. It's just a better card, and we can just play Gideon to then plus on the soul scar mage. So that's fine. All right, there we go. That's our artifact. But I guess it's still better to play Gideon first and then play Ballista for two next turn. Defend yourself. Plus a Soul Scar Mage. And then we can sneak in and attack with the Exemplars. One could have something like an Adelis here, getting in for two haste damage, yep. But we can kill it with the Ballista if we want to. So yeah, I think we want to... We also have the Deadlands for next turn. But I think I'm... F hmm. This is actually a close one, since I don't really want to lose the Ballista, since it's good with the Exemplars. Definitely playing Ballista for two here. So yeah, I think I plus on Adelis for now. Attack with the Exemplars. And then uh, keep a Ballista. Opt, sure. So the downside here is that if your opponent uses a removal spell on Ballista, we don't get any value from it. But so be it. So yeah, we don't want to see removal spell on Ballista here. Alright, just a tap land. Alright, so we'll let uh, Gideon go here. Alright, put one lots us on tap. And we drew another Ballista. That's interesting, so the thing is, if we were to shoot Adelis with our current Ballista, or uh, the Ballista we have in hand, then any spell lets them pump the Adelis, and then it would survive. While if we use the Ifner Deadlands, those are two minus one minus one counters, so even if they can save Adelis this turn, it's gonna die immediately as soon as uh, the turn is over. So... Playing Walking Ballista, of course, lets us have a second artifact in play for the Toolcraft Exemplars. But I think the Deadlands is a safer play in the face of a way to pump Adelis. So we'll see what happens here. Alright, that works. And that works as well, that's great. Alright, don't mind our spot here all of a sudden. Bonus at 5 and we can just burn them out with double Ballista. And Gitu Lava Runner, sure. Alright, so now we want to play Ballista pre combat, I think. Unlikely that they have a counter spell in this kind of deck. And now we have redundancy with the artifacts in case they kill the first Ballista. And get in there with everyone. I guess we could keep the Ballista back in case of a pumped uh, Soul Scar Mage. Guess this is fine. Alright. So, we got away with this one. If our opponent had any removal spell for the Ballista, we could have been in serious trouble. So how do we want to sideboard, and how is our opponent going to sideboard? Opponent might bring in some cheap removal spells 
for the way they lost that game to the Exemplar. So we might want to kind of switch it around and go the more controlling route, which I kind of like. So we can take out the Exemplars, bring in Lyra, Saddle. Um, Doomfall could be okay. Uh, definitely like the Harvesters. Spyglass doesn't do much. Eldest Reborn is a 2 or a 3 for 1 potentially, but it is pretty slow. So what else do we want to cut? Maybe we want to cut a Heart of Kira now that we took out the Toolcraft. Makes sense. Yeah, I don't think we want to go overboard with 5 drops, since uh, otherwise we might just get run over. But yeah, I think I like this configuration. We still have the Scrap Heaps to keep up, keep some pressure but we're less vulnerable to cheap spot removal spells from the opponent, taking out the tool craft, and instead we bring in more removal with the Settle the Wreckage and a nice wink on with uh, Lyra. That's hard to deal with unless they have a Soulscar Mage in play. And I think I like all our other cards. Harvester is also going to be pretty good unless they have an Abrade. So I think we'll try it like this, maybe reconsider for game 3. Cards I'm not sure about are Doomfall, Liliana and Eldest Reborn. Could be good, but they're pretty slow and clunky. And if Doomfall is trading for a 1-drop, that's not great for us. So let's give this a try. All right, let's see here. Hmm, this hand's rough. Don't get to block with this hand, don't get to interact. Double scrap heap. I don't think this is good enough. We don't even have double white in case we draw our double white spells. I think this is a mulligan. Nah, this one is okay. Double fatal push is quite good. That land's going to be a bit painful, but I'll keep. And can't keep a double white spell on top when we don't have a single white land. So, yeah, the scavenger ground's not looking too hot. Yeah, I think we're fine using a fatal push on that, even though we could shoot it down with ballista as well. Alright, there's our first white land. So now we can play knight or ballista. I think I prefer Knights, since Ballista could be a turn 4 play. And the Knight hits a little bit harder. And the Wizard deck typically wants to deploy its threats before playing removal spells, since most of their cards have prowess. So if they're going to use a removal spell here, that's going to kind of throw off their curve a little bit. Right, and a Lava Runner, sure. Alright, nice. So now we get to Gideon Plus. It's a bit weak to Adelis, I suppose. But what what is the other option? Ballista plus Push doesn't seem great here. So sure, let's Gideon Plus. Virtue will always triumph. That's enough. Yep. Alright, so can play Ballista for two here. And I think before we activate Gideon, we just want to try and shoot down the Eternal, see what happens. They could have a Magma Spray or a Shock here in response. Then we just trade the Ballista for the Eternal and a Shock. That seems fine. Ooh, Wizard's Lightning. Alright. 
I guess uh, I forgot about that one, but that makes sense. All right, so that one they get a bit more value since they get to damage Gideon. That's the entire reason to play the wizard deck, of course. All right, so Gideon might not be long for this world, but I'm gonna still plus. So hoping our opponent doesn't have an Adalys here. Opt is fine. And hoping we can just Fatal push their next threat and then lock the next one down with Gideon again. And buy some time until we can find our more powerful cards we brought in. Thopter Arrest I want to keep for a potential Adalys. So I think I'll just Fatal push and go on the beatdown plan with Gideon. We also have the If Nur Dead Lands as an additional removal spell with the Scavenger Ground, so we can just use it twice. And alright, there's Adalys, that's uh, what we didn't want to see. It's gonna take out Gideon. But now we can just use the Dead Lands. And I think we do that over the Thopter Rest. So get some value from our mana base, which is nice. Did cost us two life earlier, but now paying off. Alright, and Karn is excellent here. Do they have some counterspell? Alright, they do have the Wizard's Retort. I wasn't sure about that. So that's some uh, nice value for the opponent. A lava runner, sure. Uh, Heart of Care not looking too hot. Think I'm still better off using the Dead Lands on the Lava Runner than the Thopter Arrest. Even though we could use the extra mana if we draw Lyra. So maybe, yeah, maybe using Thopter Arrest is better since most creatures in the Wizard deck also die to the Dead Lands. I guess I should have played the Heart of Kirin first to maybe bait a counterspell. But oh well. Looks like they do have a counterspell. Maybe? No? Alright, that's fine. I'm happy with that trade since the Heart wasn't doing anything. Alright, so we're both top decking and we have a If Nerd Adlands. And presumably some better top decks in the form of Lyra and. Oof, speaking of Lyra, just got to call her name. So, worked out the way we did it with the Thopter Rest, otherwise we would have been unable to play Lyra had we sacked the Deadlands. Don't imagine our opponent has a, an easy answer to a resolved Lyra. Alright, let's use our Deadlands. Alright. So your opponent gets a chum block in with the Adalys here. I suppose we could have attacked first. Since your opponent's unlikely to chum block. Yeah, that was a mistake. We should have attacked first and then used the dead lands. Wait, our opponent does not block with Adalys. That seems like a mistake since now Adalys is gonna die and they don't get any value. So your opponent should have been at 16 here. Now I can keep the land in hand since if we did top deck Ballista, we can still just play the land and then play Ballista. But if we draw a tap land there, then we want to make sure to play it in case we do top deck a Ballista, so we can play it for one more. 
All right, so that worked out. Our sideboard plan of Lara Dawnbringer and a, a timely top deck. All right, so we're one and zero. So even if we lose the next two, at least we got five hundred gold back. So this hand is probably still a keep. Get to go Heart of Kirin into Scrap Heap. Just uh, munching on some snacks in the background here, so might be muted for the next couple seconds every now and then. Yeah, let's run out the heart. Thank me later. Reverse. I will defend my allies. Oh, say hello to my. All right, I'm back. So that worked out well. Let us see here. We want to be careful not to overextend into a fumigate, which uh, could definitely be the case here. So I think I'll lead with another Heart of Kirin. Resolves. Eh, um, I'm okay. Plus in Karn here. Could go even more aggressive, minus, I suppose. But then Settle the Wreckage is kind of iffy. Yeah, that's minus. So I think I'll just attack with the token here. Also I suppose, eh, actually, if they settle us, I just play a knight and that's fine. Eh, no settle. In that case, I'm not going to overextend with another creature into Fumigate. 
another glimmer, put on digging for that fumigate, or saddle I guess. Yeah, the turn where they played the fairy and minus on the Heart of Kirin is where the game definitely took a turn for the worse for the opponent. Alright. Alright, so now what? Don't think we want to attack with the heart. I think we just attack with the two tokens. Make them have the settled rankage. Alright, just a seal away. That's fine. So they only take two. And I'm fine playing out a ballista here, I think, for two. That's fine. So Skanta still not gonna transform. Another Teferi. Might plus to keep up uh, Saddle Rankage here. Yep. Alright, so they obviously have Saddle. We need to move quickly. And that could make things more complicated since now our opponent starts getting ahead on cards. Maybe playing the Walking Ballista last turn didn't pay off for this exact scenario. I guess we can minus get a Gideon, that's pretty good too. So... Yeah, I think I'm fine attacking our opponent, make him use Saddle and then we get to get a Gideon and a Knight of Miles in play. Seems fine. Won't help you win. Oh, forgot to plus get in there. Probably not gonna matter too much. They do now have Transform Los Canta. And they're gonna start double activating it. Oof, that's the card I did not want to see. Hmm, since the problem is, once the opponent has Ascanta or Teferi in play, so you have to attack, and then the Cell of the Rackage becomes effective. Alright, they're gonna minus on Gideon. History is a nice one here. So if we plus, then one of the cards is going to be Gideon. Seems fine. Good 
those are both reasonable. Get toolcraft. So I actually want to crew the heart and attack our opponent with the heart as opposed to the knight. And hopefully they don't have another cast out or something. Since uh, we have the second heart, so if they get rid of this one, that's fine by us. So they're forced to use a saddle. So this is uh, still going to be a close one here. Keep up the pace. If they find a fumigate, then they're right back into it. So we definitely got lucky not to draw any fatal pushes so far. Just the one thop the rest. Oof, third saddle, wow. But one definitely keeps drawing those. Ooh, but an Ixalan's Binding is going to be good. Alright, so what do we want to do? There's still a Gideon in Exile that we can get back, which is pretty good. So we can attack with the Toolcraft Exemplar and a Knight token here. Hopefully force them to use the Saddle Rankage. And then we can Gideon plus Binding. Our opponent's definitely still on the back foot, but with the right draws they can get out of this mess. But we are attacking them from lots of different angles, with planeswalkers, vehicles, enchantments. Uh, so not forced to use a saddle yet. And I think I want to keep the Exemplar in hand in case of a Fumigate. And now I'll make an Emblem, I guess. So your opponent is a 2, any of our knight tokens is lethal, but they do have a Seller Rackage in hand. Seal away doesn't do much here. And we have two Planeswalkers, so...
Oof, that's a card I didn't want to see. Now they can just Fumigate. Although if they Fumigate here, then they could die to Gideon plus Shafat Dune. So actually, Fumigate doesn't work. And we also still have the Heart of Kirin. So yeah, they can't cast a Fumigate here. I think they're dead now, unless I'm missing something. So yeah, Gideon doesn't work in the face of Seal Away, but Heart of Kirin does work. And we can just attack with Heart and Gideon, that way Blink doesn't do it. So yeah, I think they're dead here unless... Yep, just dead on board. Heart of Kirin, Gideon, Shafat Dunes in game. Alright, so we won game one. So how do we sideboard? I like Fragmentize, Invoke can be good, Doomfall can be good, Eldest Reborn, Liliana... Bloodfast, the rest. And that's it. Don't think we want these other ones. What do we take out? Fail push, easy cut. And then... Uh, Thopter rest can go. I think cast out might just be worse than what we're bringing in. Could just shave a Heart of Kirin in case they bring in Sorcerer's Spyglass to name Heart of Kirin. Yeah, not sure what the last two cuts should be. Maybe we can cut one Gideon. And then I think I want to cut one heart. Seems fine. Alright, let's try this. Oh, we could also bring in our own Spyglass to name Teferi. Did not consider that. But it is pretty narrow. I guess it can also name Ascanta, so sure. Bring in the Spyglass. And then... Need to make one more cut. I hope I submitted my deck list, and it's not our uh, starting 60, since that would be unfortunate. Alright, so far we don't know yet if it's submitted or if it's still our game 1 configuration. Uh, this hand doesn't have double white, but still think it's a keep. Oh, there's our plane, so we st still don't know if it's uh, the game one configuration or sideboarded. Ah, uh, there's a cast out. Are you kidding me? I get why it works the way it does, but from another standpoint, it doesn't make sense that if you forget to submit, that all the changes you've made don't get submitted. I guess that's what I get for talking through everything. Alright, so now we have a bunch of dead cards in our deck, as opposed to great cards that can win by themselves. At least so far we haven't drawn any dead cards, so that's good. Alright, syncopate for one. I think I would rather get Gideon countered than the history. Bring it on. And next turn we get to go hearts plus history. Could get punished by a syncopate by sequencing it like this. But I would rather have the heart countered by a disallow than the history. Alright, that's fine. Okay then. I guess uh, it didn't matter how we sideboarded. Sure, I'll take it. Alright, so didn't get punished there. Alright, so we're 2 0 with our Banalia deck. At least I got to show how I would sideboard if I remembered to submit in time. 
So there was some value there to be had. That's a snap keep if I've ever seen one. You just get to chain history of Banalias. Ooh, the mirror match. I like this hand in the mirror match, that's for sure. Yeah, heart is annoying. I think it's fine to trade for the exemplar here. So we probably won't be attacking unless we get the third chapter from a history, but triple history is very difficult to beat in the mirror match. And playing another history, definitely better than playing Ballista for two next turn. What we don't want to see is Knight of Malice. That could be annoying here. Uh, no, Sagas are not legendary. You can have more than one in play. Which I also didn't know at first. Alright, so... Opponent's got a 5 turn clock with Heart of Kirin. Let's see if we can do one better. Ah, there's a Knight of Malice. That's what I didn't want to see. Okay, that's gonna slow us down quite a bit. Suppose we can play our own Heart and then Ballista for one. Or we can play Ballista for two, kill the Knight of Malice, get in. That might be better. Or we can wait on that play and play another history first. So Ballista for two, clear Knight, means we get to get in for two now and get in for eight next turn unless they play some removal spells. But our opponent does get to hit us for four with the heart still. If we just play another history, then the Knight of Malice is going to stay back and we get to kill it next turn with the Walking Ballista, which is better value since our opponent doesn't attack or block with the Knight of Malice. Yeah, I think I like that. So we'll play another history. And then we might take a beating from the Heart of Kirin. But I'm expecting the Knight of Malice to stay back. Just to block on the third chapter and then we get the value from Walking Ballista clearing the Knight of Malice on defense. And that's fine. I imagine our opponent's still gonna attack with the Heart of Kirin or so Heart of Kirin gets in there. I don't mind our position here. Even if the opponent has a fatal push, they're taking eight, and next turn a bunch more. So I like that we waited a turn on the ballista to set up a better history turn. And sure, opponent can block with their heart of Kirin, but I don't mind trading heart of Kirin for one knight token. And we shouldn't be able to die on the way back. Ballista for one. It's not gonna do it. They can technically survive. Especially if they have fatal push, but... Alright, so it looks like they have a fatal push then. Alright, looks like they're just dead now. Unless they go land into something. If we take 7, there's no way we die. 
So yeah, I think our opponent's dead. Suppose they could go... Yeah, and two, two craft doesn't work since it can't crew Heart of Kirin, so they need to go Swamp and double Fatal Push. Doesn't look like it. So it looks like two histories were enough, didn't need the third one. Certainly a nice draw for the mirror match. The only interesting decision we had was on turn 4, whether to play another history or the ballista. And I think our reasoning made sense. Alright, so for the mirror I have no idea how to sideboard. I'm guessing Fragmentize is okay, Invoke the Vine is probably okay. Uh, Spyglass is gonna hurt us as well, so that doesn't make a ton of sense. Harvester might be okay. Um, don't think we want the rest. Lyra could be okay. And then Saddle could also be a Mirror Breaker. Or Eldest Reborn. Not sure about the Saddles. So what's bad in this matchup? I don't love Gideon. Matches up pretty poorly against Hisra Banalia from the opponent. Thopter Arrest is kind of medium, but it is an answer to Lyra, I suppose. I guess Thopter Arrest is okay. I think I'm just going to shave some cards, shave a heart, shave a Thopter Arrest. Maybe Eldest Reborn is just bad. Maybe Scrap Heap since it can't block, but it is a decent attacker. Yeah, I'll cut a Toolcraft. Oh, oh, come on. I hit Dom. No. The timer lied to me. The timer stopped before it actually ran out, I think. Eh, oh well. And that's, I think, also what happened in the previous match when we were sideboarding. So that feels pretty bad, but at least our hand's okay. And it's not like sideboarding was super important in this matchup. The main deck is fine for the mirror. I think I like Toolcraft plus Fatal Push this turn, as opposed to play Heart of Karen. And then Top to Rest is a nice answer for the scrap heap. But I think we're still gonna run out our own Heart of Kirin first. I'm fine trading 3 damage for 3 damage here. Alright, second like scrap heap. So I probably want to deal with their scrap heap before playing out Karn. So yeah, I think we just stop the rest here. Get rid of the scrap heap. And then attack for four with the Heart of Kirin. And then Heart of Kirin plus Karn also plays defense nicely. But I didn't want to play out Karn there, since if they do have an answer to Heart of Kirin, then Karn might uh, die pretty quickly there. Bone's got 4 mana, not a scrap heap. Alright. So here, I think I like Karn plus... Although Karn minus is also tempting now that we found another scrap heap, so we could Karn minus, put him to three, and then crew Heart of Kirin with Karn, go to two, and then he can still crew the Heart of Kirin on defense potentially. Yeah, I think I like being aggressive here. Um, 
So minus two. Should have uh, tapped our mana differently so we would had have the chapel untapped to properly represent Fatal Push, but oh well. Right, so hopefully they don't go land into Lyra Dombringer, that could be an issue. And I'm fine if they have a Fatal Push for Heart of Kirin here. Could double block. Now that our opponent let this happen, and then keep Karn instead of the token. Token is pretty valuable with Scrap Heap coming up, but I guess if they don't have anything, they're dead either way. This block could have been bad had they removed our Heart of Kirin response, but I imagine they would have killed the Heart of Kirin before blocks, so that wasn't really a concern. Yeah, let's start by plussing. Both are pretty good here. Opponent could have Settler Wreckage here, I suppose. So we could respect Settler Wreckage and only attack with the Toolcraft Exemplar. I guess if they have Settler Wreckage, we're still doing fine. And I don't want to give them a window to get back into it. All right opponent scoops it up. So didn't need any sideboard. I got there with our main deck. Alright, sweet. So we have learned a valuable lesson in the meantime and that is that the sideboard timer is uh, lying, us, lying to us and that we have uh, fewer seconds available than it actually shows us. And this sounds okay. Wow, another mirror match? Is this the same opponent as before? Could be. Um, what to play, what to play. I guess a scrap heap is fine. Alright, and no, no play here. They could have a steal away, I suppose. That's fine. We'll be attacking and then going Toolcraft plus Scrap Heap. Eh, looks like a seal away. And looks like they're stuck on two lands. So this one might be over quickly. Uh, yep, yeah, let's attack. Yeah, there's their land. Let's see what they do with it. Maybe a history, maybe a Gideon, maybe a Thopter arrest. Alright, it's a history. So a land would be interesting here for our next turn, whether we want to play Ballista on two. I guess that uh, answers our question. So don't mind attacking with everyone here. And then playing a history. Alright, they're gonna trade. And chump. So their hand must be pretty good for the late game then. Yep, 
They can't crew a Heart of Kirin if they draw it, instead a Knight of Mouse. Right, Knight of Mouse is good. Means we can only attack with our own Knight of Malice here. And then we can stop to arrest the other token. Seems fine. Let's see if they want to trade or not. They do. Alright. So we've got our history coming off next turn. And that's gonna do it. Alright, let's uh, sideboard this time around. So I should remember more or less what I did. Invoke, Fragmentize, Lyra. And then Harvesters. And then... I think we brought in the Settles as well. On the draw that also makes more sense. Then got a Toolcraft. Got a Heart of Kirin. Got the Gideons. And three more cuts. On the draw, I don't mind cutting a scrap heap. Maybe shave a Thopter Arrest and a cast out. Something like this. Let's uh, take another look. So we shaved. Toolcraft, we shave the scrap heap and a Heart of Kirin. Two and uh, Gideon seem bad against history and fast draws. Cast out can be a bit clunky and stop to rest. We kind of replace with better variants in Invoke and Fragmentize, even though they're a bit less flexible than the top to rest, but it doesn't get the Black Knight anyways. And then made room for the Saddles, which can catch your opponent off guard. Lyra can win the game by herself. Harvesters are also great in a racing situation. And then some disenchants. So this seems fine. And could make room for the other five drops, but I think they're a bit clunky. Alright, let's hit submit this time. How about this hand? This hand has some problems, but also a lot of answers. Alright, probably gonna get punished here, but we were on the draw, and even if we miss a land or two, Fatal Push is a nice cheap way to catch us back up. Alright, don't want to discard to hand size, so I'll main phase it. <laughs> we're both just passing. Right, you can Fatal Push this one, I don't mind. Yep. Looks like we both kept uh, greedy hands. And looks like I'm the first one to have to discard to hand size. Alright. Um, this is going to give away our sideboard plan, but... It's the least uh, likely card to get cast this game. Oh boy. Opponent Captain Gideons. That's good to know about. Gods of this world are worthy of service. You should quit now. Alright. This is uh, pretty rough. So, did not draw land in our first, what, uh, five draws now? So, what to discard? Probably don't need both Harvesters. Our opponent's seeing our entire sideboard plan here. That's enough. And Gideon is gonna do a number on us, but I think Gideon's not great in the mirror. Like, let's say we have a History in play or a Knight of Malice, then Gideon looks pretty pretty bad also against their vehicles. But, of course, when we're stuck on one land, Gideon's gonna kill us. Alright, they also brought in the Harvester. At least we agreed on that.
that's a lot of turns without seeing a land. 7 turns. No trial is beyond my ability. Another harvester. This is getting a little bit ridiculous. Eight turns without a land. Try getting through me. At least they're only hitting us for four a turn. So they might also have some settled wreckages in hand, maybe. Okay then. Do we want to change anything on the play? On the play could consider the toolcraft and scrap heap again. But Heart of Kirin lines up pretty poorly against Fatal Push 2. So I'm kind of over Heart of Kirin, I think. And then bring back the toolcraft. I think this is probably fine. Could name uh, could bring in Sorcerer Spyglass to name Gideon if her opponent has Gideons and we don't, but I think that's a bit too narrow still. Could also make an argument for cutting the settles now that her opponent saw them when we discarded them to hand size. But I think they're still okay. So opening hands, no white mana. Don't think I want to keep this. Still no white mana, but I think I'll keep this. So we're pretty far behind this game. Down two cards, no white mana. Alright, there's our white mana at least. Doesn't get fatal pushed. Right. Don't mind seeing that. I think I play my own harvester before playing invoke. If her opponent plays Hisra Banalia, then they can't crew the Heart of Kirin anyways. And her opponent doesn't know that we don't have any creatures left we can play, so they might kill the harvester. And then we get to get in for a 3 with the Scrap Heap again. Alright, their own Scrap Heap, that's fine. And opponent's gonna stay back on defense. This is interesting, since if the opponent has a Fatal Push, then if we invoke the Divine the Heart of Kirin, they get to Fatal Push the Harvester. So I think what we want to do is just attack with the Scrounger. If our opponent crews hard, we invoke the Heart. And next turn we'll get to play Lara Dombringer. I think that makes sense. And I'm fine if they fatal push the scrap heap, I think. Does he put on take three or do they fatal push? Alright, they might not have the push. Uh, if this Lyra can stick, that's gonna be pretty huge. If her opponent has one of their four mana answers to it, then that uh, could be bad. I guess our opponent also had Sealaways in their build. Alright. 
Heart of Kirin. And there's a seal away, nice. So now Lyra might not get sealed, sealed away. But I think I still want to crew and get a lifelink hit in. Alright, so please don't have an answer for Lyra one time. And we do have some deserts in place, so we can start using those as well. Heart of Kiran gets crewed. So by attacking with the Harvester we traded essentially 1 damage for 3 damage since we got a lifelink hidden. Opponent passes, that's suspicious. I think we just attack with the Harvester in the case of a settled wreckage from our opponents. And if they've uh, cast out, and that also works out better since I think they'll be getting rid of Lyra instead of the Harvester. So let's crew. I doubt they will say go with 4 mana without doing anything. Not gonna use a lifelink mode with 4 mana up. Right, and now I think I'll just use the Ifner Deadlands ability, sacrificing the Scavenger Grounds. Might see an end of turn seal away on Lyra, which would be bad. Instead it's a fatal push on the harvester, that's fine. And that's it. Alright, so Lyra might be safe. No, just a Knight of Malice. So last turn we potentially missed out on three life gained. This is a nice draw as well. So let's get in there. That works. And I think I play history over killing the Knight of Malice. Just put an extra threat into play. And this also protects us from a potentially top deck Doomfall or something like that. Alright, we've got a Lyra Mirror, but we have Ifner Deadlands and Shafat Dunes, which is going to make the difference here. And even another Ifner Deadlands, so we can force our opponent to chump block with our Lyra Dawnbringer, thanks to a Desert, which is pretty nice. I guess they still have the Heart of Kirin as well to chump block with, so never mind. They don't have to chump block with Lyra, so yeah, if we put the minus one minus one counters on Lyra, then they'll probably crew the Heart of Kirin and chump with that instead. But it's still fine by me. And I think I sag the Ifner Deadlands instead of the Shafedjuns, since Shafedjuns could be big next turn in combination with the third chapter, putting them up to four toughness when the opponent has a bunch of three power creatures. So that's a plan. Shrink Lyra. Uh, reason to play out a land? Not really. <laughs> okay. I see how it is. 
I see how it is. Opponent's just trying to out Lyra us. It does work out poorly for us that they had a second Lyra since now the Knight tokens don't get to get in. So I think we just shrink their Lyra again. And do we want to keep Diffner Deadlands or the Shvadjuns? It's also an interesting question. I think Diffner Deadlands is probably better. So I'll tap this. And they don't have to. They don't have to chum block yet. They can just take five from our Lyra, go to one. So this game was actually pretty interesting, as it turns out. The problem with using Shafet Junes there is that they get a free block with Lyra on one of the tokens and gain five, which doesn't force them to chum block at all, since they'll gain five life during first strike which is at the same time as we deal damage, but that equals out. Alright, history, that's fine. So don't see a reason to use the Ifner Deadlands. This turn we could just play double scrap heap, and I don't think the other tokens are attacking. So yeah, I don't mind our opponent just jumping with another heart or Lyra. They could also just take five, I suppose. Right, they're gonna jump with Lyra. And now we'll try and go wide. Alright, this game is shaping up to be quite interesting. If they find a removal spell for Lyra, then the game is wide open again. As it stands, Lyra is going to take over eventually. Alright, Karn is a nice one. Maybe just attacking with Lyra is the safest play here, instead of trying to overextend. And then we can Karn minus, make a pretty sizable token. The other option is using Ifnir Deadlands on the Knight of Malice. And then try and get in with the Knight tokens on the ground. Although our opponent probably cruise the Heart of Kirin then. And uh, gets a free block there, so again, attacking with the ground creatures doesn't seem great to me. So I'll just attack with Lyra, see what happens. Alright, that works. So I think I'll Karn and Minus here. Could also use the Deadlands on the Knight still. Yeah, that might be better actually. We already drew the Lyra, so we don't have a ton of uh, expensive cards left in our deck, so getting rid of the land doesn't matter too much. And getting rid of the knight is relevant for next turn, especially with the third history chapter. So they can get back a scrap heap. Hopefully they didn't bring in something like a Fumigate. That would be pretty effective. Doesn't look like it. We have quite a life total advantage going in our favor. Alright, another Knight of Malice. We have one one card left. I'm okay if they jump with a heart. Yeah, the problem with playing Karn is that it's pretty vulnerable here when our only blockers are the two Knight tokens. And Ballista for two doesn't necessarily do anything spectacular. So again, I think we're just attacking with Lara, not to overextend into a settler package. And I'm happy if they jump with the uh, Heart of Kirin, since that makes Karn a lot more appealing. Looks like a chump to me.
And now Karn minus seems good. I am Karn. <laughs> there is great power in the things you make. Oof, we got there. Alright, so a very interesting mirror match here. Got a bit unlucky in the second game, only having that one land, but in the end I think what won us the game were the deserts. We had deserts where opponent didn't, and they kind of uh, did it for us. Alright, so we're up to 4 0, time for the last challenge here. Let's have a look at our opening hand. Uh, yeah, looks good. Alright, the Constrictor deck. Alright, could be difficult since we don't have a Fatal Push in hand to answer Winding Constrictor and friends. So if they play, Winding Constrictor might go unopposed for a while. And that's a scary thing. So I'll play the Swamp to discourage them playing their best 2-drop. This could be Aether Hub into Siphoner, which we could kill with the Walking Ballista. Yep, and I think we have to, letting them get ahead on cards with the Siphoner is an easy way to lose. And we've got history into history for next turn, so it's not bad. Jade Light Ranger, sure. Looks like they're gonna keep another Ranger on top. It's fine by me. How big a priority is getting rid of Siphoners? It really depends whether or not they have one energy already. Since if they threaten drawing a card immediately, then... Gotta get rid of it. If uh, they only have the one energy, then you can maybe afford to wait a turn or two. Well, probably just one turn, since they likely get to two energy to turn after. Alright, so they're gonna play their Hydra here, presumably. Ah, there's a Hydra. I'm guessing this land is tapped, but it's just not showing visually. Otherwise that would be pretty problematic. Alright, so... I think we just play another History here, since that synergizes so well with the one we already have in play. And then next turn we'll see if we want to maybe Gideon plus, although plusing on the Hydra seems bad. The turn, eh, maybe, maybe it's still fine. We'll see. Evolving Wilds is fine, means they won't be playing a Verger's Gearhulk this turn. We know about a Jade Light. Alright, Ballista for two. Probably going to shoot down a knight before we get the history trigger. Since once the trigger resolves, then they won't be able to kill it, so they have to do it now. They won't get to block and sack. Alright, an aggressive attack for 8. So, if we have to block, we have to triple block. I think we just take it, though. Right, and they're not going to use the Ballista. So it could be that they have a Verger's Gearhulk that they want to use on the Ballista to win the game. I 
Alright, they are gonna shoot down the knight anyways, they just waited for our turn so we could have revolt. That's very generous from the opponent. Alright, so... Now we can go Gideon, plus on the Hydra. And then maybe play Heart of Kirin. So they could use the Hexproof Shield here. I don't think right. so. and that works. Get in 4-8 and then play Heart of Kirin. Yeah, they could have given it Hexproof in response, but we would have been fine with that, I think. Since we have ways to block the Hydra next turn. So this turn is going to be pretty important. Just a Jade Light Ranger. That's reasonable. Finds Glint's Leaf Siphoner. Is it too late for it or are they going to keep it? Yep, looks like it's too late. And Adventurous Impulse is going to go away as well. Alright. The Green Black Snake deck typically doesn't have Fatal Push, but they might have it. So using Shafat Dunes doesn't do a ton here since the blocks still trade. So I think, let's see. We could crew Heart of Kirin with Gideon, animate Gideon, attack with everyone, but then our opponent still survives. But that would force them to make some trades at least. So in case they don't have a removal spell, I think that would be good for us. Yeah, I think I like getting aggressive here. And I suppose I, I, we can just crew the Heart of Kirin with uh, a Scrap Heap Scrounger, I suppose. Is that better than using Shved Dunes in that scenario where we attack with everyone? I think it's the same, so there's no point using the Shved Dunes. Right, so let's play a Scrap Heap. Crew Heart of Kirin, animate Gideon, attack with everyone. And hope they don't have a fatal push, which I'm expecting them not to have. And I'm fine with any trade that happens. So, if they just block all the night tokens, I'm very happy. They could have a blossoming defense to save one of their creatures, I suppose. But we still have the Heart of Kirin on the way back to block, thanks to our scrap heap and get in, should something happen. Ooh, looks like they do have a fatal push. All right, that uh, got us pretty good here. Did not expect them to have fatal push in the main deck. Right, let's play scrap heap and say go. Suppose we still have one knight token, so eh, we might still be okay. Chupacabra, all right. Hmm, I think I messed up. I should have played my land in case we somehow had to get back a scrap heap. So Hydra could kill Gideon, but then they die on the way back with the Shafat Dunes. But now they die anyways to the Shafat Dunes activation. Let's do this. 
Could also play Ballista, I guess, and might be better. Ballista for three. Shoot down Chupacabra. And that should be game. So if we shoot this twice and they have a Blossoming Defense, we just shoot it again. Kill it and that's lethal. And Fatal Push is not going to save them either. Since block, Fatal Push, take three and then take one from Ballista. Alright, so we're up against the green-black snake deck. How do we want to sideboard? So, opponent's going to keep in all their Chupacabras and stuff, so I don't think Lyra is a great plan. Um, I do like Eldest Reborn. Liliana's okay. Doomfall might be okay. Not sure about the Harvesters. Opponent could also have their own Harvesters. And Invoke the Divine also kills Gearhulk, but might still be a bit too narrow. Don't think our opponent's going to be bringing in their grindy card advantage cards. I like most of what's going on here. Could see cutting a Karn. Um, I guess Doomfall's bad against the Lanor Elves start. So maybe it's not worth it. Could also bring in Settler Vankage actually. But the problem is that the opponent doesn't have to be attacking a ton to deal a ton of damage to us. Maybe one's fine, and I'll shave the exemplars. So one cellar wreckage will test it out, see how it performs. Maybe reconsider for game three. This looks like a reasonable hand. Can always cycle a cast out if we need to find lands. Alright, no Lanor Elf. Adventurous Impulse, alright. Don't mind seeing that. So, probably gonna cycle this cast out just to find some lands. Field of Ruin, wow. It's uh, some pretty greedy mana. Another Ether Hub. Alright. So your opponent might be in a bit of trouble with their mana base this game. Let's try and punish them with a fast draw. Alright, so next turn we can play History, or Gideon, and then uh, hope to draw a land for turn 4. Pwn could also use Field of Ruin on our land, so... Ooh, Duress. Alright, I think I'm fine with Duress. They had to use their last energy, and we have both History and Gideon for turn 3, so we're fine with either. They maybe should have used Field of Ruin, get a Swamp, and then cast the Duress. Since now they're locked out of playing anything else for the turn. Unless they have a 2 mana play like Ballista, maybe. Opponent takes a Gideon, that's fine. So Ballista or no Ballista. Alright, they have the Ballista. That's fine as well. Gonna attack for 3 and then play History. I think I like that more than Knight into Fatal Push. Even though you could make the argument that if your opponent's locked out of colored spells, then their only play is Spum Ballista and then Fatal Push can punish them. It's actually interesting. Yeah, actually don't don't mind this. Then we should probably Fatal Push the Ballista right now, but I think I'm gonna wait in case they do play something else instead. If they use Field of Ruin, we can float black, kill Ballista. I guess we just use it right now. 
and then get a planes. And next turn we get to play history, attack for a bunch. I don't think the snake deck should be playing Field of Ruin, but maybe your opponent's not playing with Lanor Elves, which makes them need a, a fewer green sources untapped on turn one. Evolving Wilds, sure. And there's a forest. Alright, so your opponent's got their mana online, but they're pretty far on behind on board unless they have a Fatal Push. And we drew our own Fatal Push. So. Play History, attack for 6. It looks like they do have a Fatal Push for the Knight of Malice. So they'll take 3 down to 14. Next turn, make another Knight, Fatal Push their play maybe, play Walking Ballista. Opponent knows about these two cards, I think. They don't know about the Fatal Push. They don't have any energy. Alright, Winding Constrictor to play. Into Evolving Wilds. Alright, so Fatal Push on Ballista is good to go. And we get to add Heart of Kirin. Alright, so I don't mind our spot here. Gonna need something pretty good here to get out of this. Something like a Chupacabra could uh, buy them some time. Yeah, a uh, Chupacabra killing a Knight token means next turn we could crew Heart of Kieran, attack with the Knight token, and then if they take it, they die to Ballista. So I think they're dead under most circumstances. And they scoop it up, alright. Sweet, so we got a nice clean 5-0 in the competitive event. Alright, let's uh, claim our prizes. Got one duplicate mythic. Another Jaya. And never to return, it's not a bad one. And a Sylvan Awakening. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series. So if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.